Step 3, Maxwell's fourth equation. So, we're nearing the end. We have three equations down, only one remaining. In this case, we're going to consider um, a current carrying wire. So we've got here our wire, and there's some current flowing through it uh, given by I. And we are going to look at the induced magnetic field that's uh, looping around this current carrying wire at some distance r. So we know that the induced magnetic field, the magnitude of the induced magnetic field, is given by the following expression. It's mu naught over 2 pi times I over R. Mu naught is just a constant called the permeability of free space. Don't confuse it with epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space. Permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, is related to electric fields, while the permeability, mu naught, of free space is related to magnetic fields. And this expression is known as the Biot-Savart law. And it makes sense that if you increase the current, if there's more electrons flowing in your wire, then the magnitude of your magnetic field should also increase. At the same time, if you look at the magnetic field further away from uh, the current carrying wire, meaning you are increasing R, then this expression decreases. So, we would like to have an expression for the magnetic field, but not in terms of R. We would like to get rid of the dependence on the radius. How do we do that? We can consider the following expression. It's a little trick where you compute the line integral around this loop, going around the current carrying wire, and you sum up, you integrate all of these contributions given by the dot product of the magnetic field with the line segment of the loop. And since this line segment and the magnetic field are always pointing in the same direction, i.e. they are parallel, what you get is the following simple expression. You just get the magnitude of the magnetic field because everywhere on this, on this loop the magnetic uh, field has the same magnitude, and then just the circumference of the loop, which is given by 2 pi r. So, now if you substitute from the expression for the magnitude of the magnetic field from the Biot-Savart law, you see that the two pi's will cancel as well as the r will cancel, and what we are left with is that the following line integral is simply given by mu naught, the permeability of free space, times the current i. So, we've got a nice expression. Before, in the previous step, we had an expression for e, in terms of b, now we are looking at the line integral of b, but we have it uh, related to the current uh, i. Again, we would like to rewrite this current i in terms of the electric field. So let's do that. And also this is known as Ampere's law. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Ampere's law and we're going to rewrite in terms of the current density. Again, this is our situation, and now we are considering the current going through the surface whose boundary is our initial loop. So we are considering the current going through the surface A, enclosed by our loop L. And this allows us to define the current density. And the magnitude of the current density is given by the current passing through the area, A. And this magnitude of this area is given by, again, this area enclosed by the loop. This is very important, as we will see in the next couple of slides. That way, what we can do is we can say that the total current is simply given by the surface integral of the current density with respect to uh, uh, some small area dA, which allows us to rewrite our Ampere's law from the previous slide as follows. We've got the line integral around the closed loop, L, of the magnetic field is given by mu naught times the surface integral of the current density with respect to dA. The problem with this is that it's not quite Maxwell's fourth equation. In this scenario, where we have a, just a simple wire carrying current, and we look at the magnetic field induced by the uh, current, this equation applies. But there are scenarios where there is a problem. So let's consider one of these scenarios. And it's given by the following. Let's say that we have a charging capacitor. 
What that means is that we've got some two plates separated by some distance, and there's a current flowing uh, in the wire that is charging our plate over here. So this plate will have a positive charge, and this plate will have a negative charge. And because of that, there will be some uniform magnetic field uh, between the plates, given by this E. It's not really uniform because the plates are finite, but we are considering the scenario where the plates are large enough such that we don't have to worry about the edge effects. So, let's apply our Ampere's law over here. We want to know what is the magnetic field uh, circling this current uh, carrying wire. So, we choose this surface over here uh, with this loop. And everything is fine. We can compute uh, our magnetic field given by the current passing through uh, the surface. So, Ampere's law applies. We can also choose this following loop, enclosing this following area, and again, Ampere's law applies. There's no problems. But, what happens in the middle? What happens between the plates? So, now we are considering the following loop. And we will we ask the question, well, what's the magnetic field now? Well, there's no current density. J is equal to zero. There's no electrons, no uh, current passing between these two plates. So immediately, just by applying Ampere's law, we should say there's also no magnetic field. The problem is that there is a magnetic field. You can put little bar magnets anywhere between the plates and you will see that they will um, align with the field. So what's, what's going wrong? This is where Maxwell's contribution comes in. So as we said, no current should mean that there is no magnetic field, but this is not really true. This is not what we observe in a laboratory. So, what do we do? Let's consider these plates have some finite area A. And we start by looking at the, magnet, uh, the electric field between the plates. The magnitude of the uh, electric field can be computed from Maxwell's first equation, or from Gauss's law. And it's given by the total charge on the plate divided by the area times the permittivity of free space. Remember, we said that the plates are still charging. They're not fully charged yet, meaning that we can actually look at the change in the, uh, in the electric field. So when we do that, we take the time derivative of the electric field, dE by dt. We bring this uh, epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space, on this side, so we've got epsilon naught times dE by dt is equal to 1 over A, that's still there, and now we take the time uh, derivative of the charge, dQ by dt. Again, we said that the plates are still charging, so the current is carrying uh, a new charge to the plate, and the uh, charge on the plate is still changing with time. It's not uh, some uh, settled, steady, fixed value. So, but we know dQ by dt. We know that uh, the current, the electric current, is given by the uh, 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 change of the charge with time. So we can replace this expression with i. But then we've got i divided by a, which we said is just the current density. So, even though there is no real, there are no charges passing between the two plates, we can still associate a current density with the space between the plates. And this is known as the displacement current density, described by JD. So what we can now do is we can take this expression over here, this displacement current density, and substitute it into our uh, Ampere's law expression. And what do we get? Ta-da! That's our final expression for M4. Previously, I remind you, we only had this first term. We only had the integral of the current density in the wire. But as we saw, sometimes there are situations where there is no wire, yet there is a changing electric field, known as the displacement current density, which is our second expression here. So what we do is we just add them up together. Therefore, the final Maxwell's equation is given by the following. It's the line integral around the loop of the magnetic field is equal to mu naught times the surface integral enclosed by the loop of the, um, the current density j plus this change in electric field. 
So we have seen that it's not only moving charges that give rise to magnetic field. It's also changing electric fields that induce a magnetic field around them. And that's the main point of Maxwell's fourth equation. Okay, in the next step, we're going to see how we can rewrite these equations in terms of um, the del operator. So we will go from the integral form to the differential form. See you there.